Good morning and welcome back to the Grand Prairie and District Chamber of Commerce Community Pulse Series. My name is Tom and I look after communications and public relations for our chamber. We are meeting on Treaty 8 territory and we honor and acknowledge all of the First Nations, Métis and Inuit peoples who have lived, traveled and gathered on these lands for thousands of years. As you have seen already, or uh, should have seen, this, this session is being recorded. So you'll be able to ask questions in the chat box or by using the raise your hand function and unmuting after our presentations are done. The Grand Prairie area has a robust and diverse economy. The Community Pulse series is designed to provide updates and insights from a variety of industries, sectors and organizations that make up the fabric of our unique and incredible community. Thank you to our presenting partners, Grand Prairie Regional Innovation Network, Aquaterra Utilities, Canadian Association of Petroleum Producers, and the City of Grand Prairie, and our supporting partners, Municipal District of Greenview, Community Futures, Grand Prairie and Region, and County of Grand Prairie. Today, we are highlighting our presenting partner, the City of Grand Prairie, and representing the city is Cindy Patton, Business Retention and Expansion Coordinator. Welcome, Cindy. Thanks, Tom. So as Tom said, my name is Cindy and I work with the city of Grand Prairie and we're so pleased to be sponsoring the Community Pulse Series. I'm the Business Retention and Expansion Coordinator and my job is to connect with businesses. Some of the ways I do that are through business visitations and I also look after the grants for our department such as the training grant, local marketing grant, barrier free grant and the development and incentives grant program or DIG as we like to call it. Right now, we're also working on business surveys with the goal to hear from businesses some of the challenges or opportunities you're experiencing in your day to day. So if you or your team get a call from me, please take a few minutes to answer. Over the past year, the economic development team has gone through a rebranding, shifting in the way we connect with and highlight our local businesses. Invest Grand Prairie is the banner for everything that we do in economic development. Please check out our Facebook and the stories we have on Grand Prairie's entrepreneurs. And I also have a video that I'd like to, uh, to share with you all. There's a place in Alberta where the skies and opportunities are endless. With patience, perseverance, and a drive to diversify. We're expanding, and so are our people. We're expanding industry. We're a city where people gather to trade and do business. We are the gateway to the north. Oil and gas, forestry, agriculture, and retail. We're diversifying day by day. We're expanding small business. With supports for business owners and an ever-expanding pool of clientele, it's never been a better time to be an entrepreneur. We're expanding careers, where people get their start, establish themselves, the ideal environment to embark on the journey of the rest of your life. We're expanding families, a youthful city with an energetic community who embrace family life. And with all this growth, we still find time to unwind. Nature surrounds us, and we make the most of it. Grand Prairie has come a long way and we're still growing. Grow with us. Thanks, Tom. <laughs> Back to you. Thanks, Cindy. That was, uh, I love that uh, video. It's a, a great, snapshot of the city and uh, all that you folks do and uh, i know our chamber very much appreciates uh working with you and and uh all the economic development folk in uh, our region and uh also another person we enjoy working with very much is ken loudon and uh, this week's presenter is executive director from the grand prairie regional tourism association 
Mr. Loudon will speak to some of their latest exciting initiatives supporting local business. Grand Prairie Regional Tourism Association is a nonprofit marketing organization funded by partnership fees, memberships, marketing programs, and fundraising initiatives. GPRTA is dedicated to increasing local business revenue by promoting the Grand Prairie area through every possible marketing avenue and is continually seeking new opportunities to showcase the region. They are a tourism destination marketing organization working in conjunction with Travel Alberta as a tourism destination region, helping promote tourism by negotiating and investing in marketing programs and partnership proposals. They are an ambassador for the Grand Prairie region and the visible voice for the industry. Please welcome our friend, Ken Loudon. Hey, thank you, Tom. Uh, good morning and thank you for the opportunity and the platform to present uh, an update on Grand Prairie Regional Tourism. Um, I'm privileged to be a proud chamber member um, serving on my fourth year, on uh, fourth two-year term on the board as well. Um, but Grand Prairie Regional Tourism, if I can put that hat on this morning, um, takes up majority of my space and time and efforts. As Tom alluded to, we are a destination marketing organization for the region. And we wanna emphasize that we are a regional organization, not a city organization. Um, we are that champion voice. Um, we also hold contracts in Center 2000 for visitor information uh, distribution and reception services for the building here. Um, our new brand in 20, uh, sorry, in January 13th this year, we, after 22 years of being incorporated, uh, we underwent a complete an overhaul to the organization in keeping with our uh, strategic priority number one. And we um, have completely revamped our whole identity, our storyboard, our messaging to the region, elevating it to a whole new platform that makes us more modern, contemporary, and current. Um, our, our, our icon is now the sundial, which is indicative of our location because people would ask where on earth is the tourism association. And we always used to say, um, just look for the big sundial. So we figured what well, makes sense. And so we filled the sundial with the colors of our region, uh, the colors symbolically representing the Northern Lights, which, uh, and then our new slogan, our new slogan is, is untapped, unfiltered, unforgettable. Um, as you can see from our newly wrapped tourism trekker, we are we have completely updated the image, uh, capturing our regional components. Uh, we have our city brand, of course, with the, the icon and then Nighthawk uh, Shredder uh, from Seekers Media. The other side is um, Marilyn Grubb's uh, photograph from her Northern Lights picture um, just south of Wembley, which really stimulated the coloring of our identity, because as you can see from the Jeep wrap, and that's an, and that's an unfiltered picture, that's, an, that's her picture, um, but the colors of, of that Northern Lights are exactly what our colors are in our, in our brand. And then our Wheel Well, Wheel well sponsored by uh, Minhas Group, uh, captures uh, Red Willow Falls. So our new brand um, leads to our new video. So Grand Prairie Regional Tourism is, would not be who we are without our stakeholders. And um, we are privileged to share with six regional stakeholders, the City of Grand Prairie, the uh, County of Grand Prairie, the MD of Greenview, um, Beaver Lodge, Sexsmith, and MD of Saddle Hills. Um, we are a membership-based and 
dichotomy with our regional stakeholders, promoting uh, truly a representative of our regional assets. And uh, we are so grateful for the support that our, that our regional stakeholders play in our role and helping us perpetuate that uh, Grand Prairie region is truly an untapped, unfiltered, unforgettable place to discover. And as I've said and many times uh, to this point, we're just waiting for your wow story to be published and told uh, of your, your experiences within the region. Um, <clears throat> since I adorned this seat in March 1st, 2021, celebrating my first year under my belt, um, there was this document sitting in the corner of a filing cabinet called the Destination Market Management Plan 2020, which was, which was developed in 2019, but became a uh, basically a dust collector paperweight for two years um, because nobody really knew what to do with it once it was there. Uh, it was very high level, highfalutin philosophical uh, development management plan, but not really practical on the how to implement and so I set about uh, re, re, uh, dissecting through this document. It was lovely toilet reading for 76 pages worth of uh, enlightenment um, that I'll never get back that time. But it gave me a, an understanding of what uh, could be. And as a result of that, it, it, had, it came forward with three strategic priorities. The first one was uh, leadership governance and organizational effectiveness. Uh, the second being uh, destination development and management. And the third was destination marketing and communication. Um, didn't really grasp what that all meant in real terms until I actually got, as I said, sat down and began to realize that um, the organization had uh, suffered immensely over the last five years. Um, four executive directors uh, came and went. Um, the board had to struggle to exist and to um, move forward, never mind survive. It became a little bit more on the operational side because they were, did not have the leadership coming out of this office. And so when I sat down, there was a huge gulf of uh, inadequacies and things that have been, had slipped by the wayside. And so I set out, not really correlating it, this was strategic priority number one. It was more like, oh my God, we need to really look at all our bylaws and all our policies and so on and so forth. So I set out to undergo a complete restructuring of our organization, bylaws, policies, procedures, subcommittee, terms of references, code of ethics, business conduct board application form, our DM destination marketing fee, partnership agreement contract, membership structure alone was out of alignment to our bylaws and application form. Our Grand Prairie Regional Tourism funding application form was outdated and uh, obscured and uh, ambiguous. That no terms of guidance as to what was acceptable, what not. And of course, our website was is still stale dated. It's it's been band-aided and band-aided, and now it's we're going to wipe its clean slate this year and, and redesign a whole new. But that was part of the, all the heavy lifting that needed to be done. And that's just a very very short list. That's still the tip of the iceberg. Uh, there was a lot more drilling into that that was that had under that I've undergone. Uh, we've also implemented uh, complete board uh, governance and strategy sessions to ensure that the alignment uh, to our newly revised vision, mission, and value systems and statements. Um, again, rewriting all that out. Um, the new foundation in place, GPRTA, is now postured as truly a sustainable organization to focus on promoting our region with the utmost effectiveness bringing the key message that tourism in this region is a major economic driver. And it really does coincide with the Invest GP partnership as, as that division of our city has moved in upstairs. It's really a great uh, collaborative partnership that we've formed uh, working side by side, hand in hand. Um, so it's, it's, it's kind of a, a, new, a new day really in, in how tourism and the city and our region and, 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 and regional stakeholders are working together. Newly formed relationships and partnerships have been established with small, minister, uh, small business and uh, minister and Martin and tourism, Martin Long, Travel Alberta CEO, David Goldstein uh, is at the table with us frequently, Tourism Industry Association of Alberta, Board Advisor Darren Reeder, we're members of all these Indigenous Tourism Alberta, we're members of that, uh, working on Indigenous Tourism concept development here in, in the region. Uh, and we've also, one of the major breakthroughs 
was uh, re-engaging our regional airport. And uh, Brian Grant, the CEO, has uh, over for a very long hiatus, uh, had we have not had representation from the airport on the board for years. And uh, Brian is uh, himself is back at the table representing the airport. And uh, we're so excited to, to build a new structure, a new, a new priority uh, in that area. So that's all strategic priority number one. Number two is destination development and management. And we have focused on trip planning and other supports for outdoor camping, theme experience and festivals uh, in our region. Um, we're highlighting the Pride of Place program. One of the biggest um, difficulties that we in this region face as, as citizens is that we've, we've always looked at the green grass on the other side of somebody else's fence as being a valid and valuable experience. And one of the beauties of COVID has really driven uh, that uh, message of Pride of Place home is because we were so confound to our own house domicile area that it forced us to look inwards and rediscover our own region afresh through a fresh lens. Because when, when people ask what's there to do in Grand Prairie, our most often answer is not really in much year. Where you know, and perceptions out the region and beyond is a we're a one pony horse show with just being an oil and gas town. And when 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 I've I've, I've personally experienced it when we've held provincials in soccer and teams have come up here and the families of as we all know the road only leads to somewhere else out of Grand Prix. Nobody ever wants to come up here to when when we're hosting events like sports events and provincials and such. But when they get here, they go, oh my God, I had no idea it was like this. And we know that's true because people who come to this region, because most of us are not from here, um, they all say, well, I came here with a three or five year plan and here they are 25, 30, 40 years later, they're still here. But why? Because the, this area is so much more to offer. And we are really focusing on developing that pride of place program that our citizens can be um, proud of. And that because the number one reason people come to Grand Prairie is because um, they, they're here to visit family and friends. Um, and so we have something beautiful to show them and opportunities of experiencing. And it, it's helping us as citizens um, change our prescription on our land so that we're seeing it fresh from an outside viewpoint rather than the mundane, of, well, it's always there, right? The trails down at South Bear Creek or down at, uh, at Magoo's Landing or in, uh, et cetera, or at uh, Evergreen Ridge, um, they can come, they come so commonplace so quickly, but yet for an outside experiential opportunity, they become a wow factor. Um, again, visiting family and friends, featuring blogs and, and links to our website and, and promoting our regional stakeholders' websites and Facebook pages, strategic priority number two, and we're well into that now. Uh, strategic priority number three is destination marketing. Uh, we, have, we have partnered with Explore Northwest, Ski Northwest, Destination Development, Travel Alberta, um, Ski Northwest, we're entering through year three, pushing our shoulder season, um, uh, sorry, our, our, key, our, our peak season through spring, through fall campaign, uh, numerous opportunities uh, providing to our regional stakeholders through uh, asset development, uh, video, photographs, um, story blogs. Uh, so that they can use it as well as us. And it's a, it's a great partnership. We've done the same with Ski Northwest Alberta. Uh, again, three-year program that we've entered into um, pushing um, opportunities of discovery through winter programming. Uh, destination development, we've submitted a, uh, on behalf of our region an application to Western Diversification uh, Tourism Relief Fund through uh, Prairie Can, uh, $400,000 over a five-year program to develop a stronger winter tourism eco uh, system that will highlight the Northwest corridor and drive uh, tourism into this area at an unprecedented level. And of course, the re-engagement of uh, Travel Alberta. Uh, David Goldstein himself says that the Northwest corridor, which is already established, is the final frontier of tourism development for, this, for the province. And we have established a fundamental key relationship with that to the point where on May 3rd, uh, we're hosting a tourism town hall for the very first time ever in the history of the province that we've never had one before. And Travel Alberta are sitting up and paying attention that 
this is the undiscovered territory of, of the province and the key to stimulating uh, new tourism growth and development. In that sense, um, as we call it the Golden Triangle, it's really not a triangle, but the Banff, Cal Jasper, Edmonton, Calgary segment of the province is a been there, done that, and have too many t-shirts that we don't want anymore because it's the same old, same old. So they have formulated into a status quo mode. They get their funding support. It's the same stuff last year. It'll be the same today. It'll be the same tomorrow. Nothing new to be discovered or developed or launched in that region. We, however, have so much opportunity of untapped natural resources, even in the MD of Greenview and incorporating into Grand Crash. 33,000 square kilometers of unfiltered, untapped, and unforgettable uh, wilderness experiences through trails, backcountry experiences, fishing lakes, um, et cetera, et cetera, waiting to be discovered. And that's our own backyard. Um, so regional tourists, what does it look like? What, is, what does our regional tourism uh, tourists look like? Um, let me tell you this in definitional terms, um, a tourist by uh, Destination Canada has stated that a tourist is defined as someone who travels to a destination outside their usual environment over 40 kilometers or more away one way for any main reason, purpose, whether it be leisure, business or other. Another. Our retail sector is one of our primary draw infusing approximately $4.7 billion per annum throughout this region. Uh, GPRTA's final primary objective is to entice our tourists to explore, discover, and experience all that the region has to offer. Our marquee out in Dawson Creek, because we know that that Eastern BC component is coming here for the retail is our marquee message is come shop, stay and play. So if we can entice them to stay for one more day or one or two more days and discover all that's layered. So we our itineraries are, are layered. So if you're coming for retail, but yet here's this and this and this all going on at the same time, it incentivizes them to stay overnight and experience more because we truly are have an untapped, unfiltered, unforgettable reason. This is what our tourism, our tourist does not look like. <laughs> just saying, um, I'll just leave that alone. <laughs> it, says, it says it all, but our tourists, when we look around the region, and again, this is why it's so imperative that we as citizens of our region take on that mantle of being true ambassadors. Because when our tourists who come in to experience an untapped, unfiltered, unforgettable experience, they're showing up to experience our outdoors. Um, they're coming to our Nighthawk ski hill to ski. And they've just looked like you and me, and we wouldn't tell if they're from wherever points beyond or the guy next door to our neighbor they're coming into our to experience the outdoor adventure uh get away from everything our, our sporting events uh our our experience the culture of our downtown and our food trucks uh again the outdoor adventure our, our rest they're eating in our restaurants and they're experiencing the outdoors and of course in our festivals and of course they're shopping the biggest message in the hindrance is that when we sit down at a restaurant and somebody asks the server what's going on this weekend, the most detrimental answer is, I don't know, there's nothing really. Or if somebody's at a gas station being filled up and they, and they ask the same question and they can't answer that question, it, is, it really shows that, that we as local citizens need to adopt that reality of there's something nice out here and something wonderful to be discovered. Um, over the past two years, COVID has shut down tourism nationally. Um, as well as regionally, but uh, the, re the recovery pro process will not just happen by itself. We must forge forward and let our voice echo throughout the region that the Northwest Corridor is here to be discovered and, and experienced because we truly are untapped, unfiltered, and unforgettable. And with that, I want to thank you for your time and attention. All right. Back to you, Tom. Thanks, Ken. And I'll stop sharing. I really do love that new uh, branding. I think yeah. uh, I think you guys nailed it. I was uh, right from uh, my first first look at it. It was like, yep, okay, that <laughs> that's that was uh, that was a nice job. So I know a lot of work went into that, and um, you know, you you gave an explanation for it and and uh, as to why it was designed that way. But uh, were there any other 
designs or, or once you started working on that one, you just said, yeah, that's that's a natural. Oh, we went, oh, believe me, it was a long drawn out process and back and forth and back and forth. And, and it was, um, it, it, uh, it evolved. Um, there was definitely uh, three or four different uh, vetting systems that we went through to, to finalize and fine tune it. And uh, because the first came out, when we finally settled on the icon of the sundial, it looked like um, it looked like a whale fin, <laughs> and we had to really contour the, the the actual designing of it so it did reflect the sundial rather than other imaging that would uh, that the imagination was being drawn to. <laughs> Just say it that way and <laughs> be politically correct. Um, but yeah, it was it's, it's absolutely stunning, and and you know with the new Jeep wrap. Um, I can't, I drive that thing everywhere and anywhere and, uh, head spin, um, people stop and they roll down the window and go, love it. It's great. And, and so, uh, it's certainly being seen. And part of all that is that, I mean, we entered into a three-year contract with William Joseph communications out of Calgary, although they do have a, a local office in 214 place in the city. Um, they have, um, they have worked tirelessly and endlessly and have helped elevate the organization to where we are today. So um, I can't say all the heavy lifting came from us. Uh, I'd be taking away their credit. Yeah, William Joseph is uh, is a member of our chamber. They're chamber and, members. Uh, yep, you they, betcha. Uh, they, um, you know, they're they're one of uh, a number of. Uh, um members that we have that uh, you know contribute and and uh, yeah i think they uh, they've done a nice job and and uh you know it's nice to see them making uh you know their mark uh, on on your behalf there there was uh, a good job yeah um last couple of years obviously been a, a huge challenge for for tourism and uh now that uh you know things are are slowly uh, opening reopening again um are there uh, plans in place to, uh, you know, take advantage of, of some of the uh, uh, the reopenings and, and uh, just to start doing events again oh. and, and getting involved? I, I tell you, Tom, uh, it's like the the kid pulled a finger out of the hole in the dike wall. It is busting. I mean, we were in Calgary last weekend at the Outdoor Adventure Travel Show. Uh, it was 13, over 1,300 exhibitors alone in that show. Um, and we were right near the front. And when those doors opened, it was like people had been lining up for almost an hour to get in. And it, was not, it wasn't like it was first come, first serve. It was just show up. And we were slammed. Um, everything we did on Saturday, we, we had Saturday allocation stuff and Sunday allocation stuff. We were, we were empty. We, were, we ran out of stuff. We couldn't keep up. The sea of humanity that exploded onto our laps was was unprecedented. And that's one of the messages that uh, Travel Alberta is propagating right now is that, and that we are in for um, an unprecedented year of recovery of tourism, travel, um, festivals. Um, there's festivals that have been shut down for years are now coming back into Grand Prairie, um, Bear Creek Folk Festival, East Coast Garden Party is back uh, for this year. Uh, we're, I'm already working with them. Uh, but there, there's an anticipation of that whole return to norm in every way, shape, or form. Um, the number of people who are the type of tourism that we're going to experience is because of the fact that that's, nobody's going to Edmonton and Calgary's. Uh, those experiential opportunities have, have just, like I said, went into status quo. So people want something unique. They want something authentic. And they want something uncluttered and, un and, un and, un and unclustered. And that's our backyard. And so we are poised to re be receiving um, more people through our visitor center, uh, uh, through Center 2000 this year than we've ever had before. And the biggest change and in, in paradigm shift in people's travel and tourism habiting is that they're willing to risk new experiences and they're willing to go into debt to, to do it uh, just because they've been cloistered so much in their own home and prevented from getting out. And so they're wanting open space. And that's one of the biggest uh, criteria of fulfillment saying, if we have open space, they want to come and fill it. And they don't want to be run, rubbing shoulders with the, the hordes of humanity in a bigger center or even a standard tourism center like Jasper and Bath. Um, they want to have that freedom. They want to have that, 
that flexibility. And the nice thing about our region as a whole is that you can go down an hour and a half, go whitewater rafting, come back to Grand Prairie in the in late afternoon and go to Earl's for dinner and stay in a five-star hotel. So we've got the outdoor adventure. We've got the regional experiential. Go to over to the, the Red Willow Falls or go to Eaton Falls or one of those. Uh, go for, I mean, we have 14 golf courses within an hour and a half of Grand Prairie. Who knew? Um, go for excellent rounds of golf or experiential aspects, shopping, go to East Link, whatever you, your flavor is. And you have that capacity to have urban and outdoor adventure blended together. So it's usually places that's one off. It's one or the other, but not both. And we have that privilege of having that, that diversity within our region that provides you a platform to experience um, all the adventure you want, all the open space you want, and then come back and stay at a, any kind of beautiful lodging and eat in, in uh, amazing restaurants. It's a pretty special place. Uh, I noticed. I noticed. Sorry, Ken. I, I noticed in the chat box our our friend James LePen is is joining us this morning. Hey. And, uh, we're we're thrilled to have him. He, he he made a comment about hearing the term revenge tourism bandied about. James, can you explain that for us a little yeah, bit? Yeah, good morning. Great. Great to see you. Hi everyone. Um, yeah. Thanks for uh, hosting this. This is this is fabulous. Um, I, I've learned a lot today, Ken. So thank you for you know for your presentation um so that there is an expectation that um you know there's people that have not traveled for the last couple of years and they're going to be looking to do so and uh like i said in the in the chat some people are saying um i i'm going to travel no matter what and it's really becoming a, a, a vociferous a sort of effort to get out there and and enjoy you know something that they used to do before. However, um, you know, the values haven't changed. They still want to go travel, but they're now going to just change their tactics. And as Ken mentioned, some of uh, some of the folk are looking for something less busy, uh, you know, closer to their backyard. So they're not sort of stuck somewhere if something happened. Um, you know, when there's uncertainty in the world, people look closer to home because they feel a little bit, you know, more secure. So it's very important to be able to sort of show you know what you have to offer for those uh you know people who would be usually traveling further and i've spoken to a few people who've talked about having you know vacations and staycations and daycations in alberta where they used to leave at least to you know to other provinces and even into the us and the rest of the world so they've changed a little bit of their of their travel values right which is um something that we can actually you know continue growing in this region for example and and show our uh populations that they don't have to go too far to experience something something spectacular they just need to you know look in their own backyard excellent thank you james and i know you're you're a true ambassador for for this region and uh, helping to to spread the word about the peace region and uh, we we thank you for that absolutely um uh, we are uh, open to questions. If um, you have any, pop them in the chat box or, or raise your hand. I know we have a number of businesses and, and a variety of businesses on the line today. Maybe uh, um, how can businesses uh, help tourism uh, with uh, promoting the region and, and how, do, how can they get involved? Well, I think one of the things that we're working on is, is getting our messaging to the front line. Um, we are having conversations with uh, William Joseph on how do we provide uh, ambassadorial training to industry sectors, segments uh, such as uh, hospitality, uh, whether it be hotel front lines or restaurant servers, um, gas station attendants. Um, so we've started small. Um, right now, uh, we're publishing this month around the region in Grand Prairie, just so that our, our and that's put into every one of our member hotels. Um, and so that their frontline staff, when their guests are arriving, uh, they're able to see at a glance uh, this weekend, oh, look, this is going on in town, or this week, this is going on, and they have opportunities. So that's kind of the prelude to the bigger uh, focal point, which would be actually providing webinar training sessions on how to, how to speak to our guests, how to speak to our, our customers. Um, when someone sits down in a restaurant, that server has no idea where these people are from. And so if they have to be taught, 
that tr I'm trained to regard them at, regardless of whether they think they're local or not, to treat them as an outside agent and to present something that is memorable, not just in service, but providing, uh, oh, where are you folks from? And engaging that conversation and then saying, oh, have you heard that this is going on this week while you're here? And, uh, you know, it, it behooves them to do it because it just increases their value as a server. And, uh, you know, as patrons of any restaurant, if you get better treatment and more than you bargain for, it's rewarded in that tip. <laughs> I just say, so it's to their benefit to become aware of our region and what's going on. And so we want to move towards that ambassadorial frontline webinar trainings that we're going to, we're working with William Joseph. And what does that look like and how do we implement? And that's, we're, we're targeting that to be uh, launched this year uh, into our summer season. Um, so that's one aspect alone. Um, recognizing that I think part of it is, is in our own personal experiences, uh, get, getting out into our own backyard and rediscovering it through French lenses and fresh eyes and, and, and seeing that value of what we have. Um, and if uncertainty prevails as to where and what and to do, et cetera, then we're wide open to entertaining that. Uh, if we can't see it on the website, then come on into the Center 2000 and we'll, we'll, we'll help you plan an itinerary. If you've got friends and family coming, we'll work and say, okay, when are they coming? What's, well, here's what's going on. And here's all the places. That, one of the things that we're trying to work with and, and the county did it in a way is uh, Grand Prairie by the hour in the sense of you've got three hours. Okay, here's what we can fill it up with or if a half a day or a full day and we can build those itinerary packages together for you, uh, customed according to what your flavor of uh, that you're looking for. Okay, um, you know, it, it, as we've mentioned, it has been a couple of uh, tough years, but um, there's a, a question um, directed to me, what are you hearing from your membership? Um, are you hearing an increased sense of optimism and uh, how are things going as activity is uh, ramping up as, as you mentioned? Yeah, um, great question. Um, optimism is an understatement. Um, Let's put it this way, um, just in the reflection of vitality and, and re because of the restructuring, I think, that, and again, I have to put it back to that foundational uh, platform rebuilding, um, because with any organization, you're only as good as your base. And when the community at large has seen the evolution, transformation that this organization has undergone, it stimulates, wow, there's something going on here. Uh, something to be set up and pay attention to. Um, our membership uh, over the last five years has grown, well, actually, and since I sat down, and I, uh, our membership has grown more in the last, the, this year in the last five combined, just because the number of people that have come and become part of member because they're seeing something going on and recognizing that they want to be part of a bigger picture that perpetuates, I mean, we're and one of the statements that David Goldstein says that the, the day of silo marketing and silo uh, management of a destination marketing organization is gone. It's done. And so it's that being part of that collaborative messaging with other destination marketing organizations and that single entity voice within our community and within our region suddenly becomes exponentially larger when it's tagged with a bigger platform. And so um, there's a huge excitement. There's, there's expectation. Um, I basically told our members, uh, better fasten your seatbelts and hang on, uh, because this is going to get crazy and they're seeing it there. I mean, to me, and I've said this when I, when we did, um, the growing the North, we, you know, my question when that, when we were on the ski North IAB, uh, panel was how do I measure success? And, you know, matrix are great, but they're sterile. There's no life in them. So, so to me, uh, success is when I see a business reporting back that they've increased their door count 30%. Um, hotels, ADRs, and, and occupancy rates have, have gone up substantially. Um, that's success to me. And, and, and we're anticipating and seeing it already. We're beginning to see it already that uh, local travel uh, and regional travel is, is coming in. Um, with the borders opening up, the U.S. market is going to explode up here. Um, it's going to be crazy. All right. Um, we have a question from Dan Wong. Good morning, Dan. Morning, Tom. 
Thanks, Ken, for your presentation. I joined in a little late, so I'm hoping that you haven't already answered this question. But you know, when you do a scan across all the different uh, industry partners that make up your membership, can you <laughs> identify any specific ones that you see that are maybe recovering well versus the ones that are still struggling after the pandemic? Um, you know, the restaurants, bars, event centers, recreation, sports facilities, those kind of things. Um, great question. Who's struggling? Um, definitely not our retail sector. Our hotels are still um, on the upswing, but they're not quite to where they should be. Um, restaurants are definitely um, are, are on the upswing. They're surviving very well. Uh, retail, um, because COVID drove a lot of people into uh, online shopping, it's they're taking a little bit longer in recovery to uh, getting back into person because they're seeing discounts and easier access. Um, a lot more people are uh, shopping online than ever before. Um, one of the biggest voids within our region, and this is something I'm in conversation with Shea Bird from Indigenous Tourism Alberta, is that the lack thereof of Indigenous tourism within this region. Um, that is a huge gulf of uncharted uh, areas that um, is a very difficult path to navigate. Um, I learned at the Indigenous Congress in, in November and when I attended in Calgary that um, it's not our story to tell, it's theirs. I just want them to tell it. And motivating Indigenous culture to, to develop a platform where they can tell their story or, or even before that, if want to tell their story is a huge, uh, massive undertaking. It takes years to, to even build relationships. And so um, <clears throat> that area is, is definitely a void and, and a slow, uh, because right now Shea Bird will tell you that he knows all the tur indigenous tourism operators within the region and Grand Prairie Regional Northwest Corridor is the one with the almost none. And so that's a huge uh, area to be discovered and developed. Um, but it's there's there's definitely an optimism with um, we're seeing more people engaging with festivals. Um, they're gagging at the bit uh, to get their festivals back. Stampede coming back full bore um, and, and the such and the like around the region, TV Creek and uh, et cetera. So those components are uh, we're going to see a return to full capacity norm uh, with those areas for sure. When you talk about region and, and regional, what do you consider to be the region or do you have yep. borders kind of thing? Our borders, yes, we do. We do. We have Peace River North, the river. So that's our, like I said, our, our stakeholder region is Saddle Hills Incorporated. That. Birch Hills is actually um considering coming on board as well just for the for that eastern leg um but we go right north to peace river we're to the border bc border west um highway 43 uh to the east of us all the way down to um fox creek and then cuts over to the southern just below grand cash that's the md of course um the counties in there um, and so it's a fairly large geographical footprint that we incorporate. And that's the benefit and a hindrance all at the same time. The benefit is we have so much diversity all within that region. The, 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 the hindrance is to capture it all and to uh, help not just our local people, but other citizens and, and visitors recognize that a two hour drive to, to go whitewater rafting is no big deal. Um, going to Red Willow Falls out in the east, uh, uh, west to uh, at the border, or going up into uh, into Sexsmith or out to Pluskin Hills, um, etc. Uh, exploring all around that the region uh, is those travel parameters are not an encumbersome that it's just the norm. And um, so one of the areas that we're even working with is uh, Alberta on the plate. It's a cul culinary tourism. Uh, program that we are looking to engage because we have such unique uh, individual businesses that provide uh, food flavors that are uh, can't experience out elsewhere. So there's lots of other opportunities to uh, to bridge uh, distilleries, wineries, and meaderies. I mean, good Lord Almighty, who knew that Grand Prairie region um, will have 
hopefully this year, North America's most northern winery, not a meadery or a, or a distillery, an actual winery in, the, in North America, right here in Grovedale, because their uh, broken, uh, stolen harvest uh, meadery is actually planting capsap grapes, cold weather grapes to develop a red wine right here in Grovedale. And it puts us on the map as the most northern winery in North America. Um, who knew? Exactly. Who knew? Okay, buddy didn't. Buddy didn't yeah, know. Buddy knew. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> um, uh, in an average year, prior to what we've gone through in the last couple, buddy, quiet. Um, how many visitors do we get? coming through Grand Prairie, uh, you know, in an average year. Do you have those stats off? The I, or less? I guess I, I do, but off the top of my head, I don't. Um, uh, like I said, I, my butt's been in this chair for a year to date, pretty much. Um, but it's in the tens of thousands of people through the, the building. I mean, we have a door counter. We have, we record our stats um, of when guests are coming into the building, not just because we're the uh, host reception area for the tenants of our building, because those are counted as separate. They're not counted as our as visitors. We do do our, but James, you might be able to, uh, historically, I was just gonna say, I think you would, because in 2019 for most who do not know or we may not be aware, in 2019, uh, James was the ED for a period with Grand Prairie Regional Tourism for a period of time before Travel Alberta decided that they needed him more than we did. <laughs> so in 2019, James, post or pre-pandemic, you would have an idea of the kind of numbers that we were looking at, if I can throw it to you. Um, there's a challenge around this question, Tom, because uh, they tend to aggregate all the numbers together because the amount, you know, when they're doing stats scan, when they're doing their, all these other types of um, audits, it's really hard to pinpoint um, communities of this size and regions of this size. However, I wanted to flag two things. The North as a whole brings in 5% of tourism visitation in the province, 5%, right? Uh, but 6% of the, of the revenues uh, gained. So 5% in the province spend 6% of the revenues. Uh, which, which, which actually tells you the area, and I think you know Ken alluded to this earlier, where we've got those urban hubs and you've got the mountains that are sort of, you know, we know about them and we know how they affect, you know, the overall tourism in the province. An area such as the north, in general, has the biggest potential to grow, in essence, because there's all this untapped, uh, you know, to you know, to use the branding, um, untapped potential in the area. Uh, some of the some of the challenge around the stats is actually uh, I know that the, the the tourism industry association of Alberta is trying to find ways to better track tourism because we because like I said all the all the numbers are lumped in and um, even in the north itself some parts I'm not sure if you know uh, Lac La Biche, for example is in in uh, central but Athabasca is in the north and they are sort of exactly the same <laughs> alignment so who decides. You know who goes where, and the other thing is um, is uh, how is I'll, I'll use the term access. So how are people getting into your region? Um, our CEO will talk about how Alberta itself is actually a fly-in destination. You don't get that many travelers. I, I'm talking from an international perspective. You don't get travelers necessarily driving all the way from Montana all the way up. There are a few going to Alaska. Don't get me wrong, but in general, um, Alberta is a fly-in destination. So you have to ask, how does uh, this area, how does the Northwest access the international travelers? Because that, um, you know, 5% and 6% that I mentioned earlier is more around the domestic travelers. So that's other Albertans, other, uh, you know, uh, tourists from, from BC and from the rest of Canada. So, so how do we, we pull some of those international tourists out of those traditional areas where they go and they go into some of these areas where they haven't been before? That's part of our dispersion strategy. So... Stay tuned for that because that's coming in our May town hall. <laughs> but, um, you know, uh, I, I guess tracking visitors is really important because uh, it can show that, that return on investment. And I know, Ken, you know, stats can be very sterile, as you said. But once we see, um, you know, the businesses thriving and we see other businesses growing, partnerships developed when it comes to tourism, um, it, it's going to be really 
key to showing the value of tourism in this region. I really must say before I go, I don't want to hijack this. Um, I love seeing the support in the room from, from, from some of those municipal partners. It's such an important element of tourism is having that municipal support. So I, I want to, you know, give kudos, you know, to those partners that, you know, that are supporting the DMO in this, in this endeavor. And then of course, you know, all the membership and all the other people that benefit from tourism. Tourism is an industry of industries. And um, again, I'll use another saying, um, we are all singing from the same songbook. And that's really important as we drive, um, you know, tourism in the Northwest. Thank you. James, before you go, will that Maytown yeah. Hall be held virtually or in person or a combination? It is in person. In person. Okay, where? Yeah. And Delta. At the Delta. There is a tourism Delta Hotel. Congress is coming in April. So that's tourism event for the year okay. uh, but there's and we've had a bunch of town halls already in southern and central alberta but the northern town halls are all in may okay so there's one in grand prairie and one in, in fort mcmurray and it will be in person uh, if you haven't received an invite yet it will be coming um and uh, uh you know ken and i actually curated a list of people that we wanted to invite specifically but then of course we're going to open the invites to so thus far, I should tell you, talking about optimism, the town halls have seen some very, very good attendance. For example, when I was in Red Deer, the director of tourism there said he's never seen this many people in a room for tourism ever. So it, it does tell you that there's a, you know, there's a lot of optimism and there's a lot of opportunity and there's a lot of people wanting to be involved. He actually had people, this is a note, um, Ken, for you, wanting to sign up to his destination marketing organization at the town hall because they heard about it. So, you know, take note i'll take that <laughs> it just shows that you know people want to be a part of this um, opportunity going forward, right? so um you know more to come on that and um you know more to come on registrations and uh you know how to access um you know being a part of the town hall excellent cool. thanks thanks again james uh ken the the relationship with uh between gprta and, and travel alberta i mean it's a long-standing relationship and and what uh what are the uh, what are the benefits overall of, of, of that relationship and, and and maybe just a quick explanation about how it works? Um, I think the overall benefit now that we've kind of really galvanized our relationship, James, coming from Grand Prix, understanding our regional uh, nuances, uh, be able to he's our James is our regional rep for Travel Alberta uh, for the Northwest, uh, having that advocate right at Travel Alberta's table. Is, has been unprecedentedly beneficial. Um, but the fact is that, that I think the messaging of this region is, is being heard at the, at the, by David Goldstein, our CEO, um, and, uh, and Darren uh, Reeder from Tourism Industry Associate of Alberta, partnering together and recognizing that the Northwest Corridor has so much potential and so much growth opportunities um, that our voice uh, is carrying influence, is carrying uh, credibility, uh, especially with the repositioning of the organization as a whole. Um, and so I think moving forward, and even as Travel Alberta and, and Tourism Industry Association Alberta navigate their own transitional uh, management, um, it's providing us, uh, it's giving us a louder microphone uh, to speak. Um, it, Travel Alberta put out a whole new uh, video promoting the province and it was really cool to see a segment of our hype video right in the middle of it or near the end of it I think it was um, but there's our messaging getting out on our much larger capacity than we could ever possibly try and uh, effectively do on our own um, and so having that uh, that champion for us at a provincial level that reaches out into an international market is is it's amazing. It's absolutely. So we value and truly value, not just because the Travel Alberta with the cooperative marketing funding support, uh, which is great. Um, don't get me wrong. It's a, a dollar is always welcome. Um, but it's more so the, the, the effectiveness of our, our marketing the region and having that champion at the provincial level uh, to take us to points beyond that we could never reach ourselves. Excellent. And uh, James shared uh, uh, the town hall registration link in the chat box if you'd like yeah. to follow up with that. Appreciate that. Um, if you could throw it out to your membership, that would be great because it's a wide open. Love to have you. Excellent. Um, I'm just going to save that uh, link myself. 
Uh, we're kind of nearing free. the top. We're, yeah. Yeah, we're kind of nearing the top of the hour. So, um, uh, are there? If there aren't any more questions, we will um, perhaps give you uh, send you back to your uh, regularly scheduled programming. But uh, we want to say thank you to uh, Ken and uh, to Cindy. I'm going to throw a plug in for James too for for his contributions today. Um, thank you to our presenting partners, City of Grand Prairie, GPRIN, Aquaterra, and CAP, and our supporting partners, MD of Greenview, Community Futures, Grand Prairie Region, and the County of Grand Prairie for supporting the Community Pulse series. And thank to all of you for participating. Our next installment. Uh, is slated to be April 13th, featuring uh, President Justin Coleman from Northwestern Polytechnic. Uh, just kind of finalizing and, and confirming that one, but uh, hopefully we'll have the registration open soon on that. Um, you can follow all of our events on our website, grandprairiechamber.com. We've got a business after five mixer tomorrow night at Revolution Mazda. Uh, ribbon cutting for DuraGuard surfaces on April 5th, our Chambers Plan Q&A on April 6th, our State of the uh, State of the Region on April 22nd, and a business showcase on April 28th as part of Volunteer Week with the Grand Prairie Regional Association of Volunteer Organizations. Uh, it uh, promises to be a busy couple of months because we also have that Peace Region Energy Show sneaking up quickly on May 18th and 19th. And, uh, you know, we love the fact that uh, events are ramping up again and we get to see people in person again. And uh, thank you for supporting the Chamber. Thank you for supporting uh, all of our partners and, and, um, and for supporting tourism and for spreading the word about uh, all the good things they do and all the good things we have in this region. So with that, I want to thank you all and I wish you the best of uh, the rest of the day and uh, have a great week. Bye everyone. Thank you everybody.